Hey guys, it's Jojo right here in Los Angeles. Welcome to Next Up and Forever in Your Mind. What's up, fellas? What's up? We are in the building. We oh, are I am. forever in your mind, Jojo. I have, I have learned so much. I was talking to your manager before we, you know, before this whole thing got rolling. Joby and Hart. Uh, we, we, yeah, Joby, we got, we got to talk. And I got a basically a four year education on everything that's going on with Forever in Your Mind. In you about, went back to high school. Yeah, like in about like a three minute speech. So everything was like, ah, so. Oh, yeah, he talks fast. He's, he's British. And he's British. got the whole he British gets thing down, going. He gets down there. Yeah. You guys have to meet the, their manager someday. He's, he's great. He's a, He's, he's a, a personality. He's a, unique, and a unique fella, isn't he? He's yeah. unique and bald. He wears his collar all the... Yep. All the pop he's, collar! He's, he's bald, super British, unique, and wears yes. a pop collar. He's no noticeable one, No one else is like him. Yeah. Right. Yeah, he, he is a piece of work. And I'm and I, <laughs> and, uh, in sitting back talking to you guys off, off, off set here and all, you know, behind the camera and whatnot. Nobody has tattoos yet. No. no. But you guys are getting close to, like, dangerously close to committing to the tattoo world. Right? Yeah, I am. Hey, I'm Where already going okay, skydiving. I, I was gonna, I was gonna Wait, get one over the holidays. Me? Yeah, for cool. mine is just a meaningful tattoo. I was gonna get my grandma's birthday. Yeah, I was gonna do the. You two. can't go but wrong with that, right? Yeah. So I wasn't doing anything like serious, but I was just doing that because that meaningful. But I, then I was just lazy and didn't go. I was gonna go with my sister. We were gonna go together and. Yeah, we when, didn't, when I get so. tattoos, I'm just gonna be like pieces everywhere. But I do want uh, one tattoo that goes from like. Right down, right up here, all the way down to my hip. It's gonna be every place that I've lived. No biggie. That'd be pretty crazy. Yeah. And what about you? Are you like, uh, are you in this? You know. J- am I allowed to say it? You can say it. Go for I'm it. I'm gonna get an ass tat of a smiley <laughs> face. <laughs> he keeps saying that. I will eventually. <laughs> he's been no. He's so been like saying that since like 16. He really has. The he's like, is I'm gonna wait till 18. <laughs> then he turns 18. I'm gonna wait till 21. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. No, like. <laughs> Why, why are you uh, now that now I'm starting to believe you? So when he's no, <laughs> what if I, I have one right now and I'm not? I'm just he doesn't. <laughs> maybe you did. No, nah, it's I'm not when show you. no. Nah, I remember you told me it's that it's when he's like super old and he can just look at his butt. He's like, <laughs> if I'm at like a, if I'm at an old like an, a home like for the old people, like you can whip. Yeah, out, sorry, like for the retirement people. <laughs> I'm gonna like like they're gonna they're gonna be like pulling down my pants and like wiping my my. But and they're gonna be like, <laughs> "What is this? Ch- what is this old man doing with a smiley face on his ass?" Like, and you're gonna have some little giggle, like, <laughs> yeah, "Yes, <yeah>. yes, <laughs> yeah." Oh. No, or like, or like the person, or like the person that's wiping his butt. Oh my god! God, where are um, we going with it? They're yeah, like, so wrong. <laughs> they're like, they, they awesome. see it. They're wow. like. Okay. <laughs> <Can we> stop. <laughs> it's everything's okay. Oh now. God. I'm <laughs> looking forward to the future. <laughs> Man, what, uh, this is this is gonna go into my little Rolodex of strange <laughs> tattoos. I had a strange conversation with um, Imagine Dragons once about tattoos, Ooh, and and the, one of the guys, I forget which one, said him and his buddy wanted to get chicken taco tattoos. Chicken and taco what? tattoos. Yeah, and like if you put their cat, like they stood next to each other, one calf is gonna have one half of the chicken taco, the other, <laughs> you know. And I said, why are you gonna do that? And he said, because I think when I'm 80. I, there's uh, what am I gonna love all my life, my entire life? Chicken tacos is probably gonna be one of them. So go. that's why yeah. you said that. That's so awesome. Okay. Before we go into the next topic, one more thing about tattoos. Right. Uh, okay, so I know these two people in New York that they have a tattoo on their butt, and one of them is a full cake with a slice missing, and the other one is is, is what the one slice that's missing. Hmm. That's awesome too. Is there some sort of deep meaning, or is it just a point? That's what they just told me, and I was like, "Oh, okay." And then they showed me, and I was like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> you didn't ask <laughs> any more questions. You're like, it, "Okay." It was a blue cake. <laughs> There's some cake on your butt. Like, cool. So, okay, we got that. Co- they're gonna get tattoos. I'm guessing at some point. Also, uh, another thing I've learned about the band. Before we, we'll get into music. Uh, a lot of stuff. The, the musical side of things, and just the creating the band, and and and, and, and uh, breaking the band, we'll call it, is uh, is another world all its own. But wardrobe malfunctions has been yeah. a thing. <laughs> what the heck, dude? I mean, you—it's all him. It's, it's all, it's all you. Like it's you guys are cool him. with wardrobe. Never had any wardrobe no, malfunctions, me, but man. And you're saying you've never split your pants ever. Probably never you neither. Split my pants nope. <laughs> but you have done it twice. Yes. In like re- like recently. Both in both in professional settings. So how? Okay. The give me the you're at the Roxy. What yeah. Happened okay. There? So I'm at the Roxy, and it's our last song. We're about to perform our new single, Rabbit Hole, um, and. There's the drum, like you know how like the drums are like elevated a little bit with right. like a stage design or s- whatever it's called, stage set. Um, I step with my foot and like I'm wearing like a Chelsea boot, so the heel's like long, so it makes me look taller. Um, yeah, it does. But <laughs> and then I put I put my leg up, and then all of a sudden I feel by my junk just like a rip, and I'm like, oh my god, I can't just stand here and like sing the whole song, turning my back away from everyone. I I have to I have to do what I plan to do. So I did a backflip, and. Uh, the entire the entire end of the song, I had just had like a hole in my pants, and I was just hoping to You're God to, like, that you know. Squeeze your legs while you were singing, like <laughs> oh yeah, no, I was first like, time I can't wasn't let go. It, it wasn't yeah, a was bad like, hole, but you definitely saw my underpants, and it was a nice little, nice little view. Goodness, was, he, they, he was giving everyone a peep show. 
<laughs> Literally. Okay. Yeah. And of but course, at the ra- uh, RDMAs. Okay, right? so the just, yeah, RDMAs that? last year. That was a trip in itself, my friend. <laughs> okay. The, the pants didn't rip once. They ripped like four times. They ripped like four times, yes. Literally, in, in like four different places. Yeah. Okay. So at the RDMAs. Yeah. At the four RDMAs. Times. At that one. Yes. yes. So uh, we... Well, they also like... They they, they, they told me. One of the dudes... One of like this old dude, he's like, bro, your ass. And I was like... What? <gasps> you know, like that kind of thing. Didn't someone have to sew your pants up yeah, too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I went backstage. Yeah. So I walk in the RDMAs and we're sitting in the front we have camera seats and it's like you know it's all gonna be good and whatnot and then I sit down and then all of a sudden I just feel like this breeze on my butt <laughs> and I'm like what, oh. what's going on so I don't I don't think about it or anything and then I remember during the one of the commercial breaks I stand up and the dude's like bro look 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 at your behind and I look at my behind and I just see my bright red underwear popping out of my nice little pants and I'm like <gasps> Honestly, I think that like that's as long as you had underwear on. Like, what was the one recently where the person's skirt? Like, like, we're com- talking Lenny Kravitz. You didn't know Lenny no, Kravitz. No, no. Yeah, yeah, even we like more recent, him, right? didn't more someone's recent? skirt like fall off on like the TV thing? I don't know which one that it was. was ri- but, uh, I, saw on t- I don't know. I see on t- everything's on Twitter. But, so, like, but at least it wasn't that. Though. But yeah. Lenny, Lenny, he, they got the real peep show. Lenny owned it, so that's goodness. Gr- so uh, yeah, plan. Yeah, he was like he had, like his like his uh one, once he had the the wardrobe malfunction, everything that kind of kind of got let loose. It might as well have oh, done a solo yeah. on its own because it was yeah. just you know <laughs> featured. Sorry, it's pretty pretty awful. Hey, uh, th- so these guys forever in your mind. Uh, give me, give me like, I mean, like I said, I was talking to your manager. He gave me the full rundown, and I, I find I'm so passionate about strategies and how to get, how to get, get a band from A to the the destination. You know, right. it's definitely not easy. Yeah, it is. It, you guys have gone from you know X Factor to labels to, and I've, I'll tell you some stories of some artists that have gone through some similar things to labels to being, uh, I guess, dropped from a label to uh, now we're going back on putting something stuff out yourself. TV shows. A couple of you guys have TV shows bubbling or coming up. It is so many things goes into go, goes into breaking a band. A loaded question. Kind of walk us through for people who don't know the edited version of what so I just said. I mean, edited version is is really fast. They started on X Factor. They he auditioned solo. He auditioned with a group group of friends and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, it was like called co-ed. It was and then it's weird. <laughs> Simon <laughs> took the two of them, put them in a band, um, and then like six months later, they had a performance in New York. They needed a guitar player. Emery and I are cousins. So they asked me to do it, and I did it. And Joby liked my look, and he was like, "You want to come to LA?" And I was like, "Sure." And, and then he booked a one-way ticket to LA and never came back. And then yeah, about uh, eight uh, months later, uh, Ricky and I were about to book a Nickelodeon show, and uh, we were gonna go fly to Florida and live there and do that kind of stuff. And uh, but we had an interview with Radio Disney, and then they never met Liam, and they were like, "Hold up, let's have a meeting." And then so the next day, we have a meeting with all of Disney. Literally all of Disney, like the entire board. It's, it they was did it in a span of 24 hours. Span of like, 24 get hours. They a meeting set up, and it was in front of like all the heads. They basically stole them. So like yeah. because of like the Nickelodeon thing, they were just like, no, wait. So we <laughs> went, and then basically after that, they signed us to a full development deal, which involved um, a record label, a TV uh, show. developing TV show, stuff and like that with the channel. 360, 360 deal. deal. Yeah. So we signed with Hollywood Records, and we're developing stuff with Disney. And then we parted. We parted ways. Well, we put January. out our first EP, and we put out Smooth and Missing with Hollywood Records, and then we parted ways with them over the summer. So yeah, mutual parting ways, and then we came. Now we're here, and we were r- now we're we produced. Every, well, we had producers that we're friends with and stuff like that that we've worked with before that were producing our stuff. We wrote all of it. We're putting it out ourselves. We're doing everything ourselves, and we're just having fun. I mean, this music is it's our vision, really. It's I so mean, cool. This yeah, this is what we want, and this is what we've been wanting to do for like a long time. And yeah. you know, like as an as an artist, as starting as like a band, it's good for what we did. And I I think our first EP and all the stuff we did before it it's perfect. It was amazing at the time, but now we're a little older, and now we're going through a transitioning period where you know this is who we are. This is like kid. This is what kids should be listening to or teenagers or whatever you want to call people our age tweens teens, tweens, all teens. That fun stuff. yeah young adults. young adults um this is what i think all of them are listening to right now and i think it's just super relatable yeah i think our music is uh it's it, w- what's cool about this ep is that it's more of ourselves than what we were told to make you know what i'm saying got it like <clears throat> we weren't specifically told to do this 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 like they gave us like a, a guideline, like of uh, ideas, of like sound. ideas and here's our target audience. Yeah, you yeah. Know, let's not, not you know. Well, originally, because they didn't know 
they like took a swing in the dark because like we we hadn't really written before like signing with Hollywood and they put us in a couple couple writing sessions in the beginning and they really liked the stuff that they were getting and they were like they picked so we, we were like writing all over the spectrum of like genres because we didn't know what we were going to put out and stuff like that so we would start we started just doing stuff and then we found sound and the niche and then they were like build around this so we kept doing that and then like ultimately we probably had like I think eight or nine songs to pick from that went on to the first EP yeah. and then what, what wound up happening is the songs we wrote for this we actually wrote while we were still signed and they we, they gave us all of the masters to it and stuff like that, so we uh, we were, were able to own the songs and do whatever. It's cool, we you have that. That's tougher. Yeah, it's no, absolutely. You, yeah. That's the, that was the good good thing about the way that it happened. Yeah, it was just like we, we got, got we everything. We got the good songs. We got yeah, the we good got everything that anything that wasn't released, we have. I'll tell you what, it's it's uh, and I say this with respect and love to Disney because I have a lot of friends that work for Hollywood Records and Disney yeah, and Argo. It's a it's one of the best organizations on the planet, bar none. Absolutely. But there's a little bit of blessing and a curse when it comes to Disney yeah. because yeah. you it. It, yeah, because you can, it, you know, for example, Miley. You can't say ass. Go ahead and say, say ass. ass. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you have to have so a little uh, we, filter. I've said ass like four <laughs> times in this interview now. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> but He's yeah. off the hinges. Yeah, like, like oh Miley God. Cyrus, she, I don't think she would be, she she wouldn't be Miley Cyrus of today if she were still doing exactly. what Miley did back yeah. in the 100%. day. 100%. Hannah Montana made her 100%. like, exactly. Exactly. but would she be really. would she be Miley without doing, Han- I don't know, no, you know, so. No one knows. So we don't know. But And then on top of that, while during the Disney contract, he was on a, D- Disney oh, show Disney called Best Friends, Whenever, Best Friends Whenever, which we sang Tuesdays. the theme tune for. Right. Yeah. And then he is now, which hasn't I, come out Okay, yet. so. Got some Netflix show coming yeah. up. Oh, uh, you already know. Uh-huh. Uh, all right, so uh, so we, w- in last year of, uh, not last year, 2016, 20, 2016 of October, we filmed Forever Boys for Disney. And uh, it was like the pilot that like that they wanted us to film, and we did. And it was like a vampire boy band show, and it was really, really good. And like the test results were amazing, and it still didn't get picked up. And we were like, "Oh, that sucks." How is that possible? I heard it was one of the more expensive pilots. It, it was. It was the most, it was the most expensive could, pilot, but in the ratings, it did better than every show in the past seven years. I don't get it. I mean, well, they, they, they were saying that like the the show, I think, just maturity wise, they wanted to go a little younger with the audience on Disney, so they it didn't fit with the. So is it will that show find a home at some point? You think? We Probably don't know. Not. Probably we don't not. Know. Maybe. Perfect. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. But, but but from that, <laughs> but from that, <laughs> leaving Disney, <laughs> uh, leaving Disney, actually, years. one of my Disney friends, Paris Burrells booked a Netflix TV show called Alexa and Katie. And I remember when she booked it, I, I first thing I did was call my manager and I was like, dude, is there a brother role? Is there a brother role? <laughs> and he was like, don't worry, we already got it. We're in talks, it's working. And then I did like three or four auditions. We actually went to an audition yeah, too. I, I auditioned for the part too. But I mean, Emery's like, he... The part fit him like he looks way. A lot I look a lot like I look a lot like the girl, the main girl in the show, and uh, and I booked it, and I was like, oh, "Holy crap! I'm not a Disney kid anymore. I'm a Netflix kid." So it's like, you know what I mean? That's it's pretty like, cool. You know, like you get to change that. You You're know? on the same channel as Narcos, and uh, Yo! <laughs> that's sick. That's awesome. I'm on the same channel as the Defenders, bro. Like <laughs> Netflix, oh. hit me up. Let's go. Oh <laughs> man, so so. But oh, but the show Alexa and Katie comes out. Uh, Early March or late March. Do you say Same. ass and things like that on the show? And then no, <laughs> you know? no, it's a it's a it's a family sitcom. Got it. Okay, well we can work that in later. All right, what a, uh, a couple of things I want to bring up before we talk about the music here. Um, psycho fan encounters. Here's two things I love in interviews: psycho fan encounters, crazy road stories. So give me. I know you guys have you know, ever you know. <laughs> There's a one or two. Most of your fans are l- lovely, wonderful. You call them minders, right? Yes. Yeah. Right. They made Look. them. Th- they made that name for themselves, which is really cool. Perfect. So minders. most of the minders are really cool, chill. Yeah, awesome. But there's always one or two that are just like, whoa, whoa, simmered down. You know. So what have you? Do you have any of those? If mine's, so, mine's minor. I'll just get out of the way because theirs are more interesting. Um, mine <laughs> is just like I just, well, two. I guess one was like. I was like, we were, it was when we were filming Road to the Roxy, before the Roxy show, we were like saying hi to fans outside of it, and one of them like started just tickling me. <laughs> and it just, I was just, was very uncomfortable. It was just very Probably uncomfortable. the most weird <laughs> yeah. fan right, encounter just, you yeah. could so ever, un- <laughs> like, get. No, no, so hey, they, man. no, 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 so, <laughs> <laughs> stand up. they go like this, they go, they're like, we're like hugging them, hi, nice to meet them, she's just, I'm just like, okay, well, so weird. awkward Tickled and <laughs> uncomfortable. <laughs> I went inside after that. I had to like. I was like, "I'll be back. Give me a <laughs> like second. Really yeah, I need and to like." Then, and the other one was. I guess well, you forget to tell me that he was a forty-year-old man. So oh. that was just oh, weird. Oh, okay. But, you know, that was now that would be <laughs> don't, even don't. more weird. Um, I'm just kidding. No, yeah. The other one we we did a show in Arizona, and we were doing the meet and greet after the concert, which we always do. And um, this girl comes up, and 
She goes, I don't have anything to sign. Can you guys sign my boobs or my breasts? I think she's, she's yeah, my yeah, chest she's is what she's saying. This happened kind of recently. I signed the left boob. And she goes, <laughs> and she goes, Liam, right. you don't have to do it. You have a girlfriend. I respect you. And they're just like, but then they, they signed it. You're like, <laughs> no, I was just like, I'm, it's fine. I was like, thank you. That's, so that was like, it's almost like she asked for something kind of crazy, but she was respectable, respectful with it at the same time. That, you know so what? I gave her props. You know what? Good for you. Good for and you. And they Fully got the signed boobs, so I guess that's... Also, there's been many instances w- instances where um, people have touched our butts. That's oh that's a, that's a, a th- ongoing thing. All the time. I think like, it's because we touch each other's butts sometimes. It, I mean, we I used don't. to. He does. I think we've grown out of the phase a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I still touch their nips a little bit. Like He's so... N- yeah. Nipples, like... You can't go wrong with it. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Next thing you know, I'm going to get a nipple tat. <laughs> 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 Where it says what nipple on your nipple. <laughs> nipple, like, over. So people will come up and be like, hey, what's going on? Like, you, you get the huh, tickle, and you, it, they're like, No, it's Meh. more like we're, like, talking, and <sighs> then it's just like. Oh, no, yeah, we're talking, like, and then someone behind us is like, squeeze. What the heck? Yeah. But whenever yeah, someone grabs my butt, I give them that look, like, oh. Like, <laughs> getting a little <laughs> naughty. I don't acknowledge. I have a crazy story. Um, This is when we were playing a Hollywood Nights game. This is, I think, this is our first Hollywood Very Nights game. Time. And actually, our next Hollywood Nights game is in 10 days. Um, <laughs> but someone stole my shoe, put their number on it, and then gave it back to me two hours later. Now, stole your shoe. They stole my shoe. They put their number on oh. it. Like, it was a van shoe. It was a van shoe. And you know, like, the, the this part? like the. So it was on the, the, like the edge here? Yeah, it was on the edge. And they put their name and their number. And they gave me the shoe, and they were like, call me. And I looked at them. I was like, you stole my shoe. <laughs> Like, yo, I was shoeless for, like, two hours walking around trying to find my shoe. <laughs> and so I go home. <laughs> I go home, and I and I look at the shoe, and I'm like, am I going to call her? I'm like, no. No, you're not. <laughs> you gonna. stole my shoe. So, so I call- washed that off so <laughs> much. <laughs> washed that off so much. And funny yeah. enough, funny enough, at the the third Hollywood Nights game, I saw her again. And she gave she said? <laughs> no, she just gave me a look, and I was like, "You stole my shoe, girl! Like, <laughs> oh what are you gonna do?" <laughs> it's uncool to steal a guy's shoe. I mean, yeah. I know, I know. Like, Jesus, come on. don't do that to me. It, tell you, man, f- fans are just so much. They're so much fun. They get so wrapped up in it, and they just go. They go crazy. And I, I love. I even had a weird one where I was. I met a girl way back in the day, and uh, she got brought backstage. You know, and I don't even yeah. do music. I'm just a radio geek you know you're still oh, but you got I'm fans very famous, you though. got fans but no, no, this girl walks up to me and says hey you're jojo i'm like yeah and she starts to get all excited you're jojo and and <laughs> then she goes no. Well, no no she didn't hit no. me she, she slapped me i shouldn't not the fist but and i'm not really are you serious railed me yes she slapped was she, she slapped. wait was she so fan. excited that she, she wanted to slap ex- it was the, the emotions and the actions didn't go together super excited <laughs> very happy and then <laughs> she slapped you like that's and then she, and we all stepped back like whoa why? Why'd you do that? And she said with a nice, innocent grin, "I just wanted you to remember me." Hey, that's pretty good, actually. At least you remember her. What no one I don't understand is hey, this is funny. Yeah. Now it's like the new thing is like you stand somebody, right? Mm. And like the where the meaning of that came from. Say it again, though. What stand? Stand is an M and M. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Right. You know? Do you know where it comes from? Right. What is it? Uh, no. Is the M M&M and M song? And like, is it a real story? Like this guy, like imitated, like this crazy fan that Eminem encountered that was like really crazy to the point of like almost like John Lennon territory of that Ah, stuff. And so the word, so now is obviously people have turned into a positive meaning, but it's like I don't think half the people know that it originally came from stands, as in like crazy fans, obsessive, like to the point. So it's an Eminem song. He he, it was called. It was about a stand. And he you know just named him Stan. It's just like a generic name so that no one would know. You know it what's really nuts. funny about the music industry? The double meanings. That really gets to you. Like, if, okay, for example, like One Direction's old albums, like Four, that's Stockholm just, Syndrome. Just, you know that oh, song, that, Stockholm Syndrome? Right. You know right. what Stockholm right. Syndrome is? I do not. Okay. Wait, you really don't? You really it's don't? It's an actual thing. It's an, actu- it's, when it's you, an actual when thing. You're, when you're captured or when you're, and you fall in love with your captor, it's Stockholm Syndrome. It's really messed up. Yes. Okay. Right. But, but if you listen to now, if you listen to the song, you'll never get that thought out of your head. I think I kind of wanted to leave now, and it's done, stuck in there. Oh my! So that's what that. Yeah. yeah. I'm learning so much in this uh, interview with Forever in Your Mind. We what know a, I'm just a ball of random facts. You are. God, so I guess like, so. What? A you want to know another fact? No. Yes, please. Okay. <laughs> so when we put out when when our EP puts out drops out in uh, two days, um, it's gonna be uh, out from our own like label, Nipple Fruit LLC. That's the name of the yes. nipple fruit. I nipple fruit. Yep. In your mind, incorporated. But I got <laughs> Please explain, Emery. Okay. 
You so have the stage. About about. Wow, I can actually say this because I'm 20 now in my teens. Oof. That's weird. <laughs> back in the day, <laughs> <laughs> remember those back days? In those days. <laughs> back in those days, um, when I was 13, so seven years ago, I was at our friend's graduation part party, Michael Burks, and um, we were playing volleyball, and all of a sudden, I just said nipple fruit, and everybody just like died laughing from when I said it, and I was like, "That's my thing." Like when I was 13, <laughs> I was like, "That's my thing, I nipple have fruit." Yeah, I have a. I have a mark in this world. And so I kept doing that for like a good like two years. And and then the third year of like knowing nipple fruit, like I, I didn't really say it that much, but I was like, you know what? I want to see if this is a real thing. And so I look it up on Google and it's an actual fruit. It's an actual fruit in, in the South Americas and the Caribbeans. And it's very poisonous. If you eat it, you die in like 17 minutes. Is he serious? I am He's dead serious. serious. I am but dead okay, serious. So nipple fruit is like, you know how like... Oh. Orange isn't actually an orange. There's like the scientific name for it or whatever. Right. Nipple fruit is just one of the names for it when it has the scientific name, but it's just called a nipple fruit because it, it resembles a cow's udder. So if you eat this nipple fruit or whatever the sci- – yeah, if you, you eat whatever eat it's the called, then you're going to die. I don't even know. Can, Can, we, put don't eat it. Can we put a picture up? Just for the we'll, put a, we'll put a picture of a nipple fruit up. This there is – warning, if you see this, don't eat the uh, the nipple fruit. Very yeah, bad for you. So that warning. became like a thing, and it now it it's caused death. And, and now it's it's uh, why do you guys choose it for your the yo, title of your label? Yo, wait, wait, wait! Look. <laughs> In the search, nipple fruit LLC. <laughs> <laughs> We're <Yeah>. there. <laughs> <laughs> you have made it. Oh. We're there. <laughs> made it. No. no, but it, it was just a thing. This it was always a thing, mm-hmm. like because Emery would say it too, and like when he started saying it to us, he got us on it, uh. and it was like the best thing ever. And we all started saying nipple fruit, and it so became our chant before we like perform and stuff yeah. too. It's awesome. Got it. It's awesome. Is, uh, that's nipple fruit right there. Nip, 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 fruit. Nipple, nipple fruit. So that that base that that joke. One of nature's joys. Yeah, uh, that little joke, which turned into an actual fruit. Who knew? Turned into basically the uh, the, the brand, the label. Nipple you know. fruit. Yeah. So whenever oh whenever God. we do a show, it's weird. Nipple fruit but productions. We do this. Ready? Ready? Nip nip, 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 fruit, 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 nip, 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 fruit, 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 nipple fruit. It's supposed to like hype you up, you know, when you say it, like nipple fruit, like nipple fruit. Like when you say it, don't you like feel like energetic? I feel love it. Can I can I touch your nips, Jojo? Go ahead, just give me a look. Thank you. Oh, fair enough. You just gave you gave me and that is monumentally iconic. Son of a gun. All right, so this so on nipple fruit productions, we'll call it that. Uh, this this EP. By the time some of you guys are watching this, it's going to be out. Euphoric. Uh, the e- euphoric. What do people need to know about this uh, nipple fruit production? <laughs> euphoric. <laughs> <laughs> I love it how you just started <laughs> with that. Okay, so the song, first off the bat, uh, the songs are more mature. It fits where we are in life. I think it's really exciting. The production is a lot. It's funny cool. you say the songs are more mature after we just did a nipple fruit yeah, chant. Seriously, right? But Not mature. Child at heart. Child at heart. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's what you're saying, yeah. yeah. Uh, so basically, it's just like it's us growing up. We you know grew out of the Disney thing, which is obviously. You know, it's grown up a little more mature stuff. We can get into more, more, more like topical stuff okay. and all, all that stuff. So we're just really excited about it. Um, we obviously two of the songs have already been out: uh, "Dirty Laundry" and "Rabbit Hole," and the fans have loved it so far. So we're just excited for them to hear the rest of it. And yeah, they've heard some great reaction on "Rabbit Hole," obviously. Yeah, so yeah, yeah it's, awesome. it's doing pretty well. Uh, I mean, the set list goes by like "Rabbit Hole," "Dirty Laundry," "X Date," and "Night Ride," and it's actually a really. I was listening to it last night, and I was like, huh. This actually flows because it comes in like really big. It's slowing down a bit, and then we get really like heartfelt, and then we end with a bang. You ever? I mean, a uh, couple of final thoughts on just when you put out an album or you know EP, whatnot, so, any song. Some artists I know that when when they put a song out, they're so nitpicky in their head that you almost can't nitpicky. listen to it oh, oh, okay. ever again because nitpicky. you. I should have done this. I should have no, changed. No, I I'm not personally. I don't. Hmm. I like where you're coming from. I I just sort of. If I like the song, I'll listen to it. Right. But at the same time, when you start, I, I think it comes down to like when you start performing the song and then you go to like work out, it's not going to be in your workout playlist. No, no. True. We would never put true that. You know what I mean? True like, that. But like I, when I'm playing it for friends, like it's exciting and I'm not like nitpicking it. But it, there are certain songs like in production, like X did. We went through nine different renditions of the production of that song alone because we just didn't like it was just like I don't like where it is. Uh, we don't we like gotta be like so we we want to enjoy it at the end and yeah it's just and be we like just weren't we weren't we feeling it it wasn't where it was and it, it took go. nine different productions like sometimes you have to do yeah that, but know? it was but it, uh, where it ended up is great so like we were nitpicky up until when we put it out we love what the what we're putting out at the end so you had, w- once you're okay with it but like uh, the guy that told me that was one of the I forget which member but one of the guys of Coldplay it wasn't Chris okay, but they said wow. he he said he couldn't really listen to any tracks 
no, at least not the original version, because he kept second guessing. Why didn't I do this, that, or whatever? Yeah. Now most people are fine. Yeah. Once you put it yeah. out, yeah. it kind of is. The only what it is. yeah, the only thing that I, mean, I, I do play. that with like yeah, I know you're yeah. <laughs> monumental. Yeah, the only thing I do that with specifically is like guitar. It was like I, I played when we tracked the songs. It was you know, it was like six months ago maybe, and I've gotten better since then. So I wanted to go in and retrack it because I was like, this sucks compared to what I can do and what I'm capable of doing. So and it was like a really yeah. rough guitar. Like it was like two hours in there, but then I went back and I did like six hours. To I'm so glad down. you changed when it. it yeah, yeah. yeah, it sounds awesome. Yeah, yeah it does sound good. So when a drastic it, difference. To yeah, yeah, 100% yeah. Percent drastic difference. When it comes to me with nitpicking, uh, I'm always nitpicking while we're making the song. <clears throat> like <clears throat> whenever. Okay, the one thing that I'm most nitpicky about is ad libs, and uh, I always, always, always tell the producer like, use this ad lib, this ad lib, this ad lib, because it, to me, in my head, it sounded good, but then sometimes it doesn't like to the producer's eyes, and like he does something better or something different, and you know you just got to deal with it when the final product's the final product, and then once the final product is there, master that outlet ad lib so that ad lib feels good to you, you know. Totally. I mean, yeah. it, it, you, I guess at the end of the day, you guys have to be okay with it because if it's your face out there, it's your it's your brand, right. and it's going to drive you freaking nuts. Yeah. On the flip side <laughs> of the coin, is I'm a huge classic rock person, so I wish I was in the era where songs didn't have to be perfect. Yeah. And the auto tune was barely used, and the guitar sounded raw, and it was we don't almost use auto tune. No, shut up. <laughs> Everyone uses auto tune. Never. Not slight, Never. No, but who uses you know auto-tune? what I mean? It's like. It's like I wish it was in that era where it didn't have to be perfect to be on the radio and like that sort of stuff and to be because people will make like today's generation it's categorical stuff, they'll right. they'll make it think it sounds messy if it's not done to the standard of what everything is today but I I miss the era where it's like everything was not perfect and it, it was almost gave it the perfectness of it because like, it wasn't like there was no trend but that's also the beauty in you know like I mean? the music today like some songs they're not they don't sound s- exactly perfect. And you want to listen to that more because I think Ed Sheeran's the exception to that. Yeah, Ed Sheeran. What's his name? James Arthur. Right. I like people who just who don't really care if they if it doesn't sound correct to somebody's ears. Like they're just doing it because they like it. Probably the difference in live drums versus eight oh eight or since yeah, every, the, yeah. The, you know the computerized boom everything is so perfect. Well, the live drums have that little yeah. they kind of breathe a bit. You know, you know? So there's only a few people that can rock that though. I like Kanye West and his true his version of like. 808s and all his songs like he's one of my favorite artists for yeah. sure. what really what really just came to my mind was like what you were talking about before how like uh, like like the time where people was like it was not perfect for anything you know what i mean and like what really hit me is like frank ocean his songs they're not perfect at all like his production wise is so different like he changes the beat in each song you know what i'm saying and like <coughs> when when he came yeah yeah when, when he came out with blonde that was really sick. It was really sick. It moved me a lot. Maybe that's where it's headed, a more organic sound. At least well, we hope, in, in a lot like of ways. Like true to yourself, you know? Right? Or Music is cyclical. So, like, all the, like, Bruno Mars brings back stuff from back. Ed Sheeran's going back to, like, more natural sounding stuff. Like, it was almost like, last year specifically, was, like, the peak of... EDM. E- you know, because with the, all of uh, Chainsmokers and all that stuff, like, they were, you know, th- that was the trend. And then it's sort of going back into, like, okay, we're going to go Still back. Still bumping. More guitars, more all that stuff. It's but it's very interesting, yeah. Now. Yeah, I think yeah. production stuff is a huge part, but it's like it was like very production. Now it's like okay, we're gonna settle here a bit where it's a little both. It's cool. I think you guys have learned a lot about forever in your mind today. We just start. I think we started talking and kind of ended very organically. Just kind of. I feel like I forgot we're on TV for a naturally. Second, you know? it's a natural uh, we're conversation. We're just having a nice conversation. Get this uh, EP, you guys. Euphoric. Some of you guys, when you see this, it'll be uh, it'll be out. Get it, or you're a bad person. I think it's safe to say. You're <laughs> a bad person. <laughs> you know, uh, watch them all over. You know, TV. You know, Netflix and every ki- all that, and on the road as well. You just uh, y- this is gonna be a, b- a big year for you guys. This is Thank you have a lot so you know, focused that. on 2018. So if you're a fan of Forever in Your Mind, man, this is the time you need to support these guys, and uh, and just get on. Either crap or get off the pot, as my grandmother would say. <laughs> I, I think that the That's expression cool. has a bit more of a bad word in it, but it's okay. What's that? My crap or get off the pot? You don't like that? I, well, I've heard <laughs> the crap or get off the pot. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard the, the worst one. <laughs> so I'm used to that one. Yeah. That makes sense. Don't say that one. My, grandma, my grandma used to yell at that. I'm like, Grandma, just stop. That's awful. You yeah, know, but anyway, she said, but she said the other version. You're yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, funny, yeah. funny fact, funny fact. The man who made the toilet is Thomas Crapper. 
Well, are you serious? You go. Go. How do you know <laughs> that? <laughs> How do you yeah. know that? He invented. He was invented one of the first toilets, and yeah, it's, his his name we're busting out bathroom. facts. We're busting out that you eat about one pound of hair every year. Okay, that's a disgusting Ooh, fact. Let's, that's pretty uh, good. Drink a gallon of water a day, and your skin will be healthy. <laughs> <laughs> Random fact, or you gonna you gonna? Throw it in. One r- throw last it. random fact before we wrap it up. I, I, I have to think about what, the, what a fact <laughs> is. Like. Think about it. Oh, well. I anyway, up, whatever. forever in your mind, follow these dudes. You know what I'm talking about. End of every Thank interview, you. fist bump to make it official. Boom, okay, boom, wait, I got boom. One. Oh, he's a what? Here we go. So the bad word of crap or get off the pot. Right. right? Sh- sugar, honey, iced tea. Yeah, sugar, honey, iced tea. So <laughs> you want to know where it comes from? Where does it come from? Okay, so back, this is back then, they would, on transport ships, they would ship manure, right? right. They put it in the brig of the ship, so it's bottom, and the fumes would come up, and they would actually give sickness to the... The, the passengers on the ship, I wonder? Passengers on the, well, no, the, who's driving the, the ship? The sailor, okay. yeah. So the sailor driving the ship. So the acronym, you would, it would get stamped on boxes. It was store high in transit. No kidding. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Store high in and transit. I have another one, which is interesting, is F F. You the see, yeah, the bad word. What is the and uh, it's um it was a an expression used when it was basically to get married back in the day in, in like England and stuff, you'd have to get permission oh my God, to right. to get divorced. Sorry, to get divorced, you'd have to get permission from the higher ups and you can't just do it. It wasn't a common thing. And it became if you were able to be divorced and then when you're divorced and you wanted to have a kid and you were single, you weren't it was looked down upon and all that stuff, but you, if you got permission, it was it was a stamp on the thing. It was F U C K E D, and it was an acronym. I don't remember what it was, but no that was the acronym. Yeah. All right. Pretty interesting. Google that. I had no idea. Thank you to my uh, thank facts. you to my sixth grade teacher <laughs> for those useless <laughs> facts, but they're fun. Your sixth grade teacher's like store. High. That's what. Yeah. You, no Drop kids. Yeah. Some knowledge on. Why right. would a teacher teach their kids well, no, about was, vulgar words? Was, no, but the he past. Was very <laughs> about fart jokes. <laughs> so I'll, I don't. It was really yeah. You know what? Uh, if you ever come up, if you ever do another production company, Nipple Fruit. And that the next store one is going to be store high in transit. Yeah, yeah, okay. There we go. That's gonna, oh yeah. All right, that's forever in your mind. Ooh. That Later. is forever in your mind. Peace, Thank guys. you so much. Mwah. Mwah.